a wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat interesting study that discovers something really important about dark matter, and specifically discovers what dark matter is probably not. This mysterious phenomenon that we still don't understand very well is extremely unlikely to be made out of black holes entirely. And the way this was discovered is actually really brilliant and took approximately 20 years. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but first, just a few basics, just so that we're all on the same page. So obviously, after decades of observations, it's now become even more evident that there seems to be some kind of a dark matter phenomenon out there. And it does not seem to be some kind of a quirk in the formula and cannot be explained by reworking gravitational formula such as the Newton's equations. And you can actually learn about some of these discoveries in one of the videos in the description. But even though most scientists believe it's some kind of a particle, even after decades of very extensive search, so far nothing has been discovered. And so this dark matter phenomenon is as mysterious as it ever was. But it seems to dominate the mass in the entire universe. And according to various calculations, over 85% of all of the mass in the universe seems to be dark matter. But out of many different explanations, there was actually one that interested a lot of scientists, including the iconic Stephen Hawking. And so according to Hawking and the Soviet physicist Yakov Zeldovich, maybe dark matter was actually specific types of black holes. And they originally made this proposition approximately 50 years ago. And specifically, because we know the universe is not really perfectly homogeneous and actually does have density fluctuations, in early universe, right after the Big Bang, some of these fluctuations could have collapsed into primordial black holes. Black holes of different mass that to some extent could be all over the place and could actually represent a really large mass of all of the matter in the universe. And though some of them could be tiny, possibly just a few masses of an asteroid, and thus practically invisible, some of them could be in solar masses and thus quite visible and even producing certain effects observable from distances. And though obviously this was very hypothetical for basically decades, something very unusual was discovered in various gravitational wave detections coming from colliding black holes. Now to date we've discovered approximately 90, and there's actually something very unusual about the mass of these black holes compared to the ones in the Milky Way. On average, following a supernova, we actually expect most black holes to be anywhere from 5 to 20 solar masses. This is exactly what we actually see in the Milky Way galaxy. But the majority of LIGO and Virgo detections discovered black holes of 20 to 100 solar masses, 4 to 5 times more massive than expected. And this created a bit of a mystery, or I guess a really big mystery. What exactly are these black holes and why are they so massive? Now we've discussed some of the potential explanations in one of the videos in the description, but here another explanation was that the fact that these are so massive and the fact that we're seeing so many might actually suggest that we're looking at primordial black hole collisions. Collisions of these black holes produced in the first milliseconds of the universe that are now essentially colliding somewhere out there in other galaxies. But that's of course a cool explanation, but is there any evidence and can we actually prove any of this? And turns out the answer is kind of yes. And this experiment took approximately 20 years to basically come to its conclusions. And here I guess let's briefly discuss what this experiment is. It's known as OGLE, Optical Gravitational Lensing Experiment. Here's one of the observatories located in Chile. And it's essentially a long-term experiment running since 1992, started by the Polish astronomers who realized you can actually study so much in the universe by looking at gravitational lenses. Here we're of course talking about these types of lenses, but instead of an Einstein ring produced by a massive galaxy, we're talking about miniaturized temporary lenses, possibly lasting a few months, and very likely formed by either some kind of a planet, a star, or maybe a black hole. And OGLE has become one of the most effective surveys at discovering gravitational lenses out there and even discovering various planets. Here we're talking about planets discovered entirely because of gravitational lensing. And the most recent such planet was confirmed in 2021. But in the meanwhile, for many years now, for basically 20 years, the Astronomical Observatory of the University of Warsaw has actually been collecting data for all various microlensing effects inside our neighbor, the Large Magellanic Cloud, the largest dwarf galaxy orbiting the Milky Way. And here the idea was really simple. By looking at this for 20 years, and by essentially detecting 
all of the gravitational lensing effects, it could then become possible to work out a statistical model showing if the dark matter in this galaxy is actually made out of black holes or possibly something else entirely. If the dark matter in the Large Magellanic Cloud is made out of black holes, we should be seeing a lot of gravitational lenses during that 20 year period. In essence, it would kind of resemble this if we were to look at it as a time lapse for a very, very, very long time. This is actually an example from the Gaia telescope observed between 2014 and 2018. But the ones discovered by Gaia were predominantly planets and various stars. OGLE, however, was really focusing on more massive objects, specifically stellar mass black holes. But the principle was the same. As the object passes in front of a distant star, and in this case the object would be some kind of a black hole, depending on the mass of the object, it would last anywhere from several weeks up to several months. A black hole that's about 100 solar masses would actually produce a microlensing effect lasting several years. And by detecting a lot of these, we would then be able to calculate the overall proportion of black holes in this galaxy compared to expected dark matter. This idea was proposed approximately 45 years ago, and it even inspired several projects such as MACHO and EROS. But the problem with those earlier projects is that they didn't actually observe the skies long enough. But now OGLE had enough data from 20 years of observations of large Magellanic Cloud. And on top of this, earlier observations were just not sensitive enough to a lot of these events that would last for months or even years and could not actually detect black holes. But the new detection techniques are much better and we can now basically see everything. And so here by observing approximately 80 million stars located in this galaxy and by conducting the longest and the most accurate photometric observation in modern astronomy, they did manage to discover quite a lot of microlensing effects. But in their calculations, they expected approximately 260 microlensing events from various black holes approximately 6 to 7 solar masses down to a mass of a typical planet, or possibly 27 microlensing effects from extremely massive black holes approximately 1000 solar masses. So basically here, depending on the mass, they expected different number of detections. But after 20 years, the actual number was only 13. Here's actually a visual representation of this, showing us the expected numbers on the left and the actual numbers on the right. And this of course suggests maybe two things. First, stellar mass black holes and even smaller black holes, possibly a mass of a planet, do not explain dark matter. Or to be more exact, smaller black holes can actually only comprise 1.2% of dark matter maximum, whereas larger black holes could maybe represent approximately 11% of dark matter. But that still leaves us with 90% of dark matter unaccounted for. So basically, something else has to explain the rest. But I guess the second discovery is that, well, at least a small part of dark matter could be explained with black holes. In other words, because they actually did make some discoveries, it means that a partial mass inside of this galaxy is actually made out of these really old, silent black holes. Although when it comes to that LIGO detection of black holes colliding in various galaxies millions and billions of light years away from us, unfortunately this explanation doesn't actually help us at all. And so these definitely don't seem to be primordial black holes and are actually most likely in specific locations in the galaxy where black hole collisions are just very common and black holes seem to grow larger and larger. This could be in various global clusters, but it's actually a lot more likely to be in centers of various galaxies where various black holes orbit a central giant black hole that actually creates a perfect environment for their collisions. At least that's one of the explanations we have from the last few years. But when it comes to dark matter being black holes, unfortunately it can only be explained by a very small fraction. And interestingly, this is actually not the first time this particular discovery has been made using similar observations. A few years back, Japanese astronomers actually used the Andromeda galaxy to try to discover the same. And there, they also only detected like one gravitational lens, even though they expected hundreds. And so at least for now, we can actually assume that maybe here Stephen Hawking was not actually correct and black holes, especially stellar mass black holes, don't seem to explain dark matter at all. And because this experiment is based on 20 years of very solid observations and extremely accurate data, it's extremely difficult to argue with this conclusion. Which of course means that dark matter still remains a mystery and still cannot be explained by any theory effectively. But I guess one question that needs to be answered now is, okay, so what exactly did they actually discover during these 20 years? Or in other words, what exactly are these events? Were all of these black holes? And if so, what kind of black holes? And were they actually primordial? 
And so hopefully in the next few months, we'll actually discover a little bit more about what was discovered in this study, because whatever was discovered here is actually mysterious for obviously different reasons. But until new studies and new discoveries, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.